In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this procedural pool tiles material in Blender. If you'd like to purchase the project files and also help to support this channel, then you can get that over on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. I'll have the link in the description. And also, this video is brought to you by my procedural material packs. So I create packs of 10 realistic procedural materials created with Blender's procedural nodes. So if you like using procedural materials in your artwork, then definitely check out these procedural materials packs and purchasing the packs is also a really great way to help support me and this YouTube channel. So here's the procedural material that we're going to be creating in the video. And then at the end of the video I'm also going to show you how I would put this material on something like a cube. So what I did is I pressed shift A and I just added in an icosphere and then on the add icosphere settings right down here I just turned these subdivisions up to six uh, so that it's very smooth and then I also shaded this object smooth. Then I also added a cube and I just kind of rotate the cube over and then over here on the modifier properties I just added in a bevel modifier uh, so that it has a little bit of a bevel and that'll make it look a little bit more realistic and then I also added a plane and just added a subdivision surface modifier on it and then added an emission material on it to get some nice lighting and then also to help me get very realistic lighting over here on the world I added in this machine shop 02 1k HDR and this is from polyhaven.com so the link will be in the description if you'd like to download the same HDRI that I'm using and then just one last thing before we start, I am going to be using the Node Wrangler add-on, so if you don't have that enabled, just click on Edit and open up the Preferences. And then over here on the add-ons, you can just go to the search and you can type in Node, and then just turn on the Node Wrangler add-on. I'll show you how to use it in the video. Alright, so I'm just going to select this sphere here, and then we can click on New, and I can just call this Pool Tiles. So I'm first going to start by pressing shift A and I'm going to search for a brick texture. I'll just drop the brick texture right down here and then using the feature from the node wrangler if I select the brick texture I can press control T and that's going to add the texture coordinate and mapping. Now I actually don't need the mapping so I will press X to delete it and then I can just plug the object up to the vector. And then also using the other feature from the node wrangler I can hold down the control and shift key and click on the node to preview it. Now let's also click right up here and we're going to drag and drop the pool tiles material on this object as well. Now you can see that there are some issues with the placement of the brick texture, but I'll show you how to fix that after we create the material. All right, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to turn this offset to one, and that way there isn't going to be any offset between the tiles. Now on the brick texture, the mortar size, I'm going to change this to a 0 0.07. And you can see that now the mortar is quite a bit thicker. And then I'm going to turn the mortar smooth to one. And now if you zoom in, you can see that that's much smoother. Now you can see that the row height is different from the brick width. So to make it look much more like tiles, I'm going to change the row height to a 0.5. And that is the same as the brick width. So now they look much more like tiles. Now on the color here, I'm going to make the mortar fully white. And then color two, I'm going to make that a light blue color. So I'll make it very light and then just make it a light blue color, something like that. And then color one is going to be a dark blue color. So I'll just make it a lot more blue, more saturated and a bit darker. All right, so just something like that. Those are the colors that I'm going to use. So now what I want to do is I want to put this into the bump because I want to make the tiles look like they're bumping out. So I'm going to take the color here and put that into the normal and then we need to convert this to normal data. So I'll press shift A and I'm going to add a bump node. Let's just drop the bump node right down here. And then I want to put the color into the height on the bump here and that way we'll convert it to normal data. So now if I control shift and click on the principled BSDF, you can see it looks like the mortar is popping out. Now there's a few things that I want to change with this because I don't want the mortar to look like it's popping out. I want the tiles to look like they're popping out and also they're popping out a little too much. So I'll press shift A and I'm going to search for a color ramp node and I'll just drop the color ramp node right down here. Now I actually want to switch these two values and that way it's going to invert it. So now you can see that it looks like the tiles are popping out instead. And then I also want to drag this white tab over a lot and you can see that now the tiles are a bit bigger and they're not popping out quite as much and then I think I will bring the black tab out just a little so if I control shift and click on this you can see we're making it more contrasty so it's more clear where it's going to pop out and where it'll be back in and that might be a little bit too strong so I think I'll pull this back a little bit something like that and then I also want to take the color on the brick texture and put 
put that into the base color of the principled BSDF. So that's starting to look like a tile material. One thing that I want to do is I want to make it more shiny because pool tiles are pretty smooth and shiny and they also might be a little bit wet. So on the roughness here on the principled, I'm going to change the roughness to a 0.25 so it's much more shiny. Now I also want to give a lot more detail and variation in the color. So to do this, I'm going to press Shift A and I'm going to search for a noise texture. We'll just drop it down here and then I can plug the object up to the vector. So we're going to use this noise texture to add a bunch of little colors in the base color. So let's now press Shift A and I'm going to search for a color ramp node drop it down here and then I'll take the factor and plug that into the factor of the color ramp and then I can control shift and click on the color ramp to preview it. So there are a few things I want to do the noise texture. I want to change the scale to 150 and that way there's a lot more detail. And then I'll also turn this detail all the way up to 16 so it has even more detail. So now we can change the colors of the color ramp and that's going to change the colors of the noise texture. So I'm going to take the black tab and I'm going to make this a blue color and this is going to be a little bit of a darker blue somewhat saturated something like this and then also I can hold down the control key and click and that is going to add a new tab and then this one I'm going to make a light blue instead so just something like that a nice light blue and then I will also pull it over just a little and then this one I'm just going to leave this as white all right, so we have this nice texture here. So now I want to add it in with the color. So to do this, I'm going to press Shift A and I'm going to search for a mix RGB. Let's just drop the mix RGB right here. And then I'm going to take this color from the brick texture and put that into color two. Now on the mix here, I actually want to change it to multiply. And then I want to turn the factor all the way up to one. So now you can see it's adding these both together. We do have most of the brick texture, but then it's adding the little speckles and all the detail from the noise texture. So that is looking pretty cool but I want the mortar to be fully white because I don't want the mortar to have any of those little blue speckles or anything. So what I'm going to do is click on this multiply and I'll press shift D to duplicate it and drop it down here. And then I want to change it from multiply to add right down here. Just change it to add. Now, if I control shift and click on this color ramp right here, we already have a mask for where the mortar is. So I can take the color and put that into the factor on the add, and then I can control shift and click on this. And then color two, I want to make that the mortar color, which is going to be all the way white. Now it is working, but it's flipped. So we need to flip it around. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for an invert node and I'll drop the invert node right in here between the color ramp and the add. So that way it's going to flip the values. And now you can see that the mortar is white and then the tiles are those blue colors. So now I can plug the color into the base color and then control shift and click on the principled. So that is looking pretty cool and we're almost done with the material, but I want to give it just a little bit more bump all over the place. So I'm going to take this bump and I'll press shift D to duplicate it and drop it right down here. So I can now take this color from the color ramp and I can plug that into the height. Now you can see that it's going to be way too strong. It's going to add tons of detail right there. So on the strength here, I just want to turn this way down to a 0.1. And now you can still see that subtle bump in the reflections, but it's not too bumpy. And that is it. That is the finished material. Now, if you look right over here on a cube, if you're trying to add it on some sort of cube object or something like that, you can see that the mapping isn't really working very well. And that's because this brick texture on default doesn't really work the best, especially with using the object coordinates. It doesn't really work very well on objects like a cube. So what I'll do is I will duplicate the pool tiles material and then I will change the texture coordinates for this object. So what I'm going to do is click right here and that is going to duplicate the material. I can now rename it to pool tiles cube or just rename it to whatever you want. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this from object to UV. So instead of using the object coordinates, I'm going to use the UVs of this object. So I'll plug the UV into the vector of the noise texture and the brick texture. So now I just want to UV and wrap this cube. So I'm just going to tab into edit mode. And because this is a cube object, it works really well if I just press U and do the smart UV project and then click on OK. The smart UV project works really well for cubic objects kind of like this. So now I'm just going to hop over right here to the UV editing tab. And then we just need to play with the UVs to get it to the size that I want. So I will press Z and move my mouse down to go into the material preview. And then I can tab into edit mode. And because we're in the UV editing, you can see the UVs right here. So now I can just scale the UVs up to something that I like. And you can see if I keep scaling it, eventually it's going to align up. So the mortar is kind of on the edge there. And if for some reason they aren't aligning up, you can just press G to grab. And then I'm going to hold down the shift key to make my movements more sensitive. And you can just align the corners up. And that way the mortar is going to be on the corners. So just something like that. 
All right, so I'll just render this out now and we'll take a look at the final material. All right, and there we have it. So that is the procedural pool tiles material. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope it was helpful and thank you so much for watching. And again, if you'd like to help support this YouTube channel and purchase the tutorial files, then you can get that over on my Gumroad store and my Patreon, links will be in the description. And also definitely check out my procedural material packs. That is also a great way to help support this channel. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you in in a future tutorial.